from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. The bases are loaded and there's nobody out. What? And you're pitching, Johnny boy. Bert McGraw. Yep, right as rhubarb. What's in your mind, Bert? You and a job you didn't finish. A job I didn't... What are you talking about? The Mason-Dixon matter, remember? Well, sure. Ruth Dixon's body was found on Newport Beach. But you didn't find out who killed her, Johnny. I figured that was a job for the police. They want to talk to you about that. And so do we. Oh? Yeah, Ruth Dixon was insured with our company. For how much? A thousand dollars. One thousand? You don't expect me to go back to Newport for the commission I'll make off that, do you? Nope. But if you'll go, we'll foot the bill. Oh, how come? Tell you when you get here. Interested? Yeah. Now. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, Act One of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Providential Assurance Company, 393 Dewey Avenue, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Dixon murder matter. Expense account item one, a dollar and twenty cents taxi from my apartment to the Providential Building. Along the way, I did some thinking. A week ago, a girl's body had been found on Newport Beach. The Masons and the Dixons had each identified it as the body of their missing daughter. I managed to locate the Mason girl... That meant that Ruth Dixon was the girl on the beach. Who had killed Ruth? Well, I didn't figure that was my job. But evidently the branch of Providential did. Why? Well, I hope Bert McGraw would tell me. Oh, Johnny, come in, come in. Ah, morning, Bert. Uh, About this Dixon matter, I suppose you're wondering why I was so anxious for you to go back to Newport. Well, I am kind of curious, Bert. Well, I told you, Ruth Dixon was insured with our company. But for only $1,000, you'd save money by paying it off and forgetting it. Maybe. But it isn't that easy. Oh, why not? Because of the Newport police, for one thing. Well, what have they got to do with her insurance? Well, not a thing. But they have got plenty to do with our company and its representatives. And last week, you were one of them. So? So the Newport police, uh, Captain Lewis of Homicide to be exact, called here this morning. Who's Lewis? Miller was the man I worked with. Uh, Lewis took over because Miller didn't follow up on you. And he's very unhappy with you, Johnny. I can't imagine why. No? Well, Captain Lewis says you left Newport without giving his office all the information you had on the Mason girl. The Mason girl? What's she got to do with the Dixon investigation? Well, how should I know? Carla Mason didn't even know Ruth Dixon. Lewis says different. But that's beside the point. We can't afford to have any police department in this country feeling the way the Newport boys do about our investigators. Oh, come on now, Bert. It isn't at all that serious. Johnny, we have to have police cooperation. And we can't force them to cooperate, so we try to build up a sufficient amount of goodwill. But, Bert, no, I... No, it's too late to apologize. Who's apologize? Captain Lewis chewed out my boss, my boss did it to me, and I have orders to do it to you. Okay, so get it over with. Well, I... I'm almost through. Mm. Except that no matter what it costs us, it's going to be worth it to have goodwill restored. You understand? Sure. And whatever you do in Newport, please keep Captain Lewis informed. See, if you stumble onto something that might lead to the Dixon girl's killer, tell Lewis about it. Okay, Bert, whatever you say. Oh, uh, uh, no hard feelings, Johnny. No, 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 everything's just fine. Oh, good boy. Glad to see you understand. For an expense account like the one you're going to get... I can understand the theory of relativity. I took a cab back to my apartment. That's item two. Item three, $18.50, transportation to Newport, Rhode Island. After checking into the Ogden Hotel, I called headquarters. Captain Lewis wasn't in, so I left a message asking him to call me. Then I called the girl in question, Darla Mason. Johnny. Hi, what are you doing back in Newport? Oh, just winding up a little unfinished business. Nothing to do with me, I hope. No, not a thing. Uh, Darla. Yes? 
if you're not busy tonight, uh, why don't you meet me for dinner? Why, Johnny, I'd love to. Fine. You say where? Mm, well, how about the yacht club at eight? Go ahead. I can take the cruiser from our dock. And after dinner, we can go for a ride on the bay. Mm, sounds great. See you at 810, Johnny. Bye. Bye. Expense account item four, $15 worth of American Beauty roses for Ruth Dixon's mother. I rented a car and drove out to the Dixon home. The moment I stepped into the house, I could smell the heavy, sweet odor of oriental incense. While Mrs. Dixon put the flowers in water, I located the source of the incense. It came from an ornate burner on the mantel in the living room. Behind the burner, draped in black, was a large photograph of Ruth Dixon. And on each side of the photograph were two lighted candles. Oh, Mr. Darlow, these are the most beautiful roses I've ever seen. Well, I, uh, I'm glad you like them, Mrs. Dixon. Oh, yes. Ruth will, too. Beg your pardon? I said Ruth will like them, too. I'll take them to her in the morning. Uh, That is, if you don't mind. Oh, no. No, not at all. Mr. Darlow, I don't know how you feel about such things. But I believe those who have passed on never really leave us. What do you think? Well, I, uh... I haven't given much thought to the subject. But you should. Ruth will appreciate these roses as much or more than she ever would have. Do you believe that? Well, I... Well, I I didn't know Ruth when she was alive... When she was here, Mrs. Dixon. Oh, that's right. You didn't. Well, she's still here. And if there's any doubt in your mind, why, you just come with me and visit Madame de Salle. Madame de Salle? Yes. She's been such a help and comfort to me these past few days. Well, without her and her teaching, I'd have been completely lost. This Madame de Salle, what is she? She's just an ordinary person, but she has wonderful occult powers. She can see beyond the veil, Mr. Dollar. And she's promised to let me speak to Ruth as soon as the conditions are right. Do you know when that will be? Lucille? In here, Henry. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Dollar. I have to put out these candles. Henry doesn't believe like we do. (coughs) Why? You've been at it again, haven't you, woman? Now, Henry. (laughs) Open the windows. (coughs) Get the smoke and the smell out of... Oh, Mr. Dollar. (coughs) Afternoon, Mr. Dixon. What are you doing back in Newport? He's trying to find the man that caused our girl to pass on. (laughs) Oh, she didn't pass on, Lucille. She died. Henry, really? Well, anyway, I wish you luck, Mr. Dollar. I have a hunch I'm going to need it, Mr. Dixon. Mr. Dollar, wouldn't you like to stay to dinner? We aren't having anything fancy. Just leftovers and boiled cabbage head. Oh, my... Now what? Why, I just remembered why I burned that incense. And it wasn't what you thought, Henry Dixon. It was on account of the cabbage. It it (laughs) covers the smell. That's not the truth, and you know it. Oh, now, Henry. Look at that mantle, Mr. Dollar. (laughs) She's made a regular shrine out of it. Looks like a heathen altar. Henry. Well, it's the truth. And I wouldn't blame Mr. Dollar if he was afraid to stay to dinner with a woman like you around. You aren't afraid to stay, are you, Mr. Dollar? No, of course not, but I do have another engagement. Oh, well, any time you can come, you just let us know. Yes, thanks, I'll remember. Well, now, if you men will excuse me. (laughs) You will. And you open the windows in the back. Yes, Henry. Oh, Mr. Dollar. Yes? When Madame de Salle arranges... That fraud... When Madame de Salle arranges for me to talk to Ruth, I'll let you know what she says. Good evening. Poor dear. She hasn't been the same since Ruth's body was found on the beach. Mr. Dixon, according to the medical examiner, Ruth's body was in the ocean for approximately six weeks. Mm, That's right. Do you remember if Ruth was going with anyone in particular just before the time she disappeared? The police asked me the same question. I couldn't answer it. You mean you don't remember? I mean that Ruth wasn't a girl to be tied down to one man and any more than she's content to live like she had to after my health failed. Did she date very often? Well, you know, she worked as a hostess at the yacht club. Yes, sir. She met a lot of rich young men there. And if you ask me, she dated too much. 
Of course, her mother took Ruth's side, said she had to if she was ever going to get herself a husband. But she went with no one in particular. No. She never settled down enough. Uh Uh, What about her friends, Mr. Dixon? Was there someone she might have confided in? She didn't have any girlfriends. Liked men a lot better. Uh But, um... Oh, there was somebody. Well, I expect you could say he was her friend. Too old to have been a boyfriend. Besides, he doesn't have enough money. Who is he? His name's Sam Hood. He runs a small craft repair shop down by Viking Beach. Viking Beach is on the Atlantic side of Newport, approximately a mile from Land's End, where the Dixon girl's body had been washed ashore. Once there, I didn't have any trouble locating Sam Hood's repair shop. It was on the end of a large wharf. For a moment, I thought the wharf was deserted. Then I heard it. Below the wharf, sitting low on the water, was an old converted PT boat. And standing on deck, tinkering with the controls, was a heavy-set man wearing thick glasses and greasy dungarees. I was about to call him when he looked up. Afternoon. Hi. Can I help you? Yeah, I hope so. I'm looking for Sam Hood. He ain't here. Going on his vacation. Oh, fine. Can I do anything for you? I'm his brother, Leroy. Well, yeah, Leroy, maybe you can. You want me to come up or you going to come down? I'll come down, but uh, how do I do it? Stairs over to your left there. Oh, sure. You're a stranger around here, ain't you? Yep, that's right. Well, I'm always glad to meet up with a stranger. This is such a little bitty place. Most everybody along the waterfront's heard everybody else's stories so many times till they're sick of it. What'd you say your name was? It's Dollar. Johnny Dollar. Well, welcome aboard the Connemore, Mr. Dollar. Connemore? That's an odd name for a boat. Sure is, ain't it? But I found it in a book. Sure fits her. And me, too. What's your line, Mr. Dollar? I'm an insurance investigator. Well, now, that must be mighty interesting work. Yeah, sometimes. Um, can you chew tobacco? No, thanks. Oh. Well, I got a brand new plug of brown mule here. Ain't had it out of the wrapper. So if you want some... No, no, thanks, Ryan. You sure missing something? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, my tooth. You want to take a look around? Go ahead. Of course, the time ain't no fancy yeah, yacht. Excuse me, uh, what did you say? I said the Carmel ain't no fancy yacht, but she's all mine and Sam's, and I'm proud of it. Oh. So where did you say your brother was, Leroy? Um, Sam? Oh, he's visiting our folks down in Augusta. I would have gone, too, but somebody had to stay in mind in the store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know when he'll be back? Oh, uh, not for sure. But anything Sam knows about, so do I. We got real runny mouths in our family. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, Leroy, did you know a girl named Ruth Dixon? No one just to tip my hat to. But Sam did. Yes, sir. Uh, that gal and Sam... They used to sit up there on the wharf looking out toward Gooseberry Island, and they talk, talk, talk. You know what about? Nope. Get off that railing, you whitewashed brother! See ya! <laughs> Leroy, you told me a moment ago Sam couldn't keep a secret. Well, he said she was full of dreams. Man, you asked me, she wasn't nothing but another two timing. Uh, just like all of them. Oh, that's not a very good opinion of her, Leroy. I can't help it. Sam was crazy for her, but she didn't even let on like she knew it. How did your brother take the news of her death? Oh, just awful. That why I left town? Yep. Does Sam own a thirty-eight revolver, Leroy? Oh, sure. Most everybody who has a boat owns something like that. But, hey, wait a minute. You getting ideas? No, just asking questions. Oh, well, Sam couldn't have killed her. I know it. What makes you so sure? Well, because he's my brother. And how he was so broke up when he heard about Ruth. Why would you suppose anybody would want to put a bullet in a pretty gal like that? I don't know, Leroy. I don't know. I asked him a few more questions. Watched him chase the seagulls off the railing once more, then left. At 7.45, I was sitting in the Yacht Club bar waiting for Darla Mason. At 8.30, I was still waiting. And at 9.30, I gave up and went back to my hotel. I hadn't been in my room ten minutes before someone started pounding on the door. Darla! 
Carter, are you in there? Yeah, yeah, who is it? Captain Ruiz, open up. Well, good evening, Captain. Uh, nothing good about it. Huh? Fine thing you pulled. You come over here to help, then you go gallivanting off where nobody can find you. I called your office as soon as I hit town. Because the people you're working for in Hartford told you to. Now, look, that insurance agent said you were skeptical about there being a connection between the Mason and the Dixon. I still am. Now, you won't be when I tell you what happened early this evening. Okay, so what happened? Dollar Mason was shot, and the sure. bullet came from the same gun that killed Ruth Dixon. <laughs> of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. It is a very well-known fact that symbols are important to men everywhere. Whether they be symbols of country, religion, or honor, they're a cherished part of the culture and tradition of all peoples. As in almost all countries of the world, the people of Spain are very religious. And in the Spanish town of Vendrell, the people were having difficulty with a symbol. A 300-pound angel sitting on top of a 150-foot church steeple. The angel had been there since 1784 and needed repairs to keep it from falling down on the heads of the parishioners. But 150 feet is a long way up. And 300 pounds are a lot of weight to bring down. Now, there was a great deal of head scratching over the problem until someone casually mentioned the problem to someone else who happened to be stationed at the United States Air Force Base in Zaragoza, Spain. It wasn't long before visions of a helicopter came to mind. Because Americans like to help other people everywhere, the Air Force Whirlybird lifted the angel from the church steeple, brought it down for repairs, and later returned it to its perch. So grateful were the people of Vendrell for this act of friendly cooperation that they held a mass celebration of American Day to show their appreciation. Television and newsreels carried the story of kindness. So did the newspapers and magazines throughout Spain. This gesture on the part of the United States Air Force created a new symbol, a symbol of friendship and understanding that became a symbol of freedom. The right of all men everywhere. Now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Dixon Murder Matter. <laughs> Expense account item six twenty cents for two cups of coffee at the Eat Right Cafe near my hotel, where Captain Lewis proceeded to give me the details surrounding the shooting of Dollar Mason. She had been on her way down to the Mason boathouse, where she'd planned to take the cruiser across the bay to the yacht club. As she neared the boathouse, someone had fired at her. And the bullets that wounded her came from the same gun that killed Ruth Dixon. So there was a connection between the Mason and Dixon girls. And if you want more proof, I have it. Like what? Well, they both spent a good deal of their time at the yacht club. Yeah, but for slightly different reasons. Ruth worked there before she was killed. But she must have known Darla Mason. No, no, that's no good, Captain. You go to the district attorney with that kind of evidence and he'll throw you out of his office. He'll want proof they knew each other, and how well. Yeah, I suppose. What about Darla? When can we see her? When the doctors tell us we can. She still hasn't regained consciousness. Hey, Captain, do you know where the Masons have the work done on their cruising? Yeah, and that's another thing. That's Sam Hood's place. Have you questioned him? Never had a chance to. According to his brother, he's away on some sort of vacation down Georgia. Left the day the Dixon girl's body was identified. Are you sure he's still in Georgia? Well, I can ask the Augusta police to check up on him. If he is, have them tell him about Darla being shot up and find out if he knew her. Okay. Well, you ready? Yeah. No one was seen prowling around the Mason place tonight, huh? Well, nobody else was down at the boathouse. Uh, thanks, Johnny. Sure, Captain. Then stop being so formal. My name's Pete. Okay, Pete. Well, I guess we've done all we can for a while. I'm not so sure. No, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm not sure about that either. But I have an idea. Or maybe I ought to call it a hunch. About what? Well, I... I'd like to sleep on it first, if it's all the same to you. 
Have I anything to say in the matter? No, not a bit. It was late and I was tired, so I did the obvious thing and went to bed. Early the next morning, I called the hospital. Jala Mason had regained consciousness and would recover. But she couldn't be questioned for another two or three days. So I finished dressing and went down for breakfast. I was crossing the lobby when someone called me. Mr. Dollar. Hmm? Mr. Dollar. Oh, Mrs. Dixon. I've been waiting to see you. Well, you should have called. I'd have come right down. Oh, no. I was afraid I'd wake you up. And I didn't want to do that. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you. Mr. Dollar, is there some place we can go and talk? Well, there's my room. Oh, no. I mean, well, it wouldn't look right, you know. Oh, um, yeah, well, then, uh, how about over here? Looks like a nice, quiet corner. Uh, yes, this, this will do nicely. Mr. Dollar, remember I told you about Madame de Salle? Yes, I remember. Uh, would you like to sit down? Oh, no, I'm too excited to sit. Excited? About what? Well, I've been trying to tell you about Madame de Salle and what happened last night. What did happen? The conditions were right. I beg your pardon? The conditions. They were right. Remember, I told you, Madam was going to let me speak to Ruth when the conditions were right. Well, they were last night. Oh. Well, aren't you interested in what Ruth had to say? Oh, uh, yes. Yes, I am, Mrs. Dixon. She told me who killed her, Mr. Dollar. What? Yes, sir. Just as plain, I heard it from Ruth, and there's no doubt about it. It was her voice, all right. Uh, Mrs. Dixon, exactly what did Ruth say about the person who murdered her? Oh, Ruth described her to a T. Her? She said it was a woman. Young, dark hair, brown eyes, and a big red scar on the back of her left hand. I see. You seem disappointed, Mr. Darla. <laughs> I, I guess I was doing a little wishful thinking, Mrs. Dixon. Well, wishful thinking or not, Ruth told me who it was that killed her. Oh, her name, too? Well, she didn't know her name. Oh. But that big red scar. Now, you find a woman who has a thing like that on the back of her left hand, and you'll have the guilty party. Yes, well, I'll look for someone like that today, Mrs. Dixon. Now, come on, I'll buy you some breakfast. <laughs> later, back in my room, I put in a call to Captain Lewis. Morning, Johnny. Morning, Pete. Anything new? Well, we heard from the Augusta police. Yeah? Sam Hood's in Augusta, all right. Been there for over a week. Uh-huh. Did they ask him if he knew the Mason girl? I yeah, said he did. Said the Masons used to let him and his brother serve as a cruiser. Uh-huh. Johnny, when are you going to stop playing games and tell me your idea? Uh, hunch, you mean, Pete. And I'll tell you just as soon as I get back from the library. The library? Oh, and while you're waiting, call back to the Augusta police. Have them get hold of Sam Hood again. What for? Ask him who named his boat. What? Yeah, ask him if it was his idea to name it the Connemore or his brother's. Johnny, are you feeling all right? Never felt better, and I'll see you in about an hour. I found what I was looking for in the library, then went back to Captain Lewis's office and told him what I was now beginning to believe. While I was there, Sam Hood called from Augusta with the answer to the question the police had asked him. Then I went alone down to the wharf on Viking Beach. Roy Hood was sprawled lazily over the deck of the Connemore, trying to sleep and at the same time keep an eye on a fishing line he tossed over the side. I started down the steps toward the boat. Well, doggone. Hi there, Mr. Dollar. Ah, morning, Leroy. Man, I sure didn't think you'd be back down here so soon. You know, Sam ain't back yet. Yeah, I know. You having any luck? Hmm? No, no, no. Just making believe. For real fishing, you got to go out beyond Gooseberry Island. Oh, how about taking me someday? Why, sure. Man, you just say the word and we'll go right now. Well, no, no. I'm afraid I couldn't do that this morning, Leroy. Well, you just let me know any time. Yeah. How fast is this boat cruise? 25 knots. Now, ain't that something? Fastest boat between here and the Navy Station. How long would it take you to get over to the Mason home and back again? Why, well, wouldn't take no time at all. How come you asked that? Did you know Darla Mason was shot last night? Heard something about it, yeah. Do you know Darla Mason, Leroy? <clears throat> How could I know somebody like that? I don't know. But if you didn't know her, why did you try to kill her last night? You joking? No, not a bit. Oh, come on now, man. What you mean I tried to kill her last night? Just what I said. That ain't funny. That ain't one bit funny. But it's the truth, isn't it? The truth? 
Now, who told you that? Stella. What? What? She couldn't have. No, why not? Because the paper says she's still unconscious. Besides, she couldn't see nobody around that boathouse last night. It was too dark. Dark as it was the night she killed Ruth Dixon. You know, you're beginning to get me riled, Dollar. That's so. It sure is so. Coming around here with all kinds of lies, saying I killed Ruth Dixon. I didn't say it. Your brother did. Sam? <laughs> oh, man, now you really lying. Sam's in Augusta. You ain't seen we him. We talked to him on the phone this morning. He told us about you and Ruth Dixon and the Mason girl and every other woman who comes around here. Well, just because I try to make a little time with him, that don't mean I killed nobody. Sam told us different, Leroy. He told us that you can't stand to have a woman laugh at you. Every time a girl has, you've tried your best to make her sorry for it. Sam, he really... You really did talk to Sam? What do you think? I, but why would he tell on me? Why? He never has before. He didn't want to, Leroy. That's why he left here when he did. He needed time to think. Decide what to do about his brother. About you. What you gonna do about it? What I have to do. Take you in. No. Nobody's taking me anywhere. I don't want to go. And anybody cries, they're going to be sorry. Hey, Roy. Where do I come out of there? I'm coming. You look out, dog. You look out. You don't try stopping me. Where do I come back? No. Johnny, you all right? Oh yeah, I'm just fine. Come on up. It's all over. Yeah, Captain. I know. Tell me something. If I can. What put you on to him in the first place? Two things. You see, he liked the girls, wanted to be a lady killer. But they'd only laugh at him, and he couldn't stand that. I see. But the big thing is, what he named this boat, Connemore. I don't get it. Well, a man like Leroy, not much education, he'd have to have a real reason for wanting to name it that. But why? What's so special about that? You ever hear of Bluebeard? A lady killer? Sure, who hasn't? Well, Connemore was his real name. I saw Mrs. Dixon late that same afternoon. I'm afraid she was a bit disillusioned. Having been so sure that the person who had killed her daughter was a woman. But there was one funny thing. On the back of Leroy's left hand was a long red scar... Expense account total, including car rental, hotel bill, and transportation back to Hartford, $968.20. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a case that couldn't be solved. Because there was no solution. And yet, well, join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood. Written by Charles B. Smith, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Gene Tatum, Jeanette Nolan, Frank Nelson, Russell Thorson, Sam Edwards, and Austin Green. Musical supervision is by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverley speaking.